here's a segment from a recent Gun Talk radio episode. You can listen to all the Gun Talk radio podcasts however you tune in, or check out guntalk.com for more. All right, buckle up because we're going to have a bunch of fun today. I am Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk Radio because we're going to be talking about guns. And we are actually kind of remote, but almost not. If it's weird, uh, we're actually at the brand new, just opened Gun Talk Studios, Range Radio Studios, down in Louisiana, kind of halfway between, roughly between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. 17,000 square foot complex here, complete with uh, shoot house, outdoor ranges, studios, TV studios, classrooms, whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, we'll be telling you a lot more about that as we go along here. Let's see if we can get this thing turned on. Chris, are you there with me? I uh, am. Yeah, I right. can hear you. I can you hear go. me. Okay. We've got Chris Serino with us now from Gun Talk. Chris, of course, a lot of people know from the Top Shot show, uh, law enforcement background, like your entire career. Uh, My entire life. <laughs> lo- lo- local, federal, firearms trainer, uh, air marshals, just goes on and on. You've been teaching it and doing it, SWAT teams and everything else. And, of course, I mean, you've been training people half your life, at least, I would guess. I absolutely have, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm 52 years old, and I've spent uh, 30 years in law enforcement and training, and I uh, keep doing it. Yeah, exactly right. And and now, part of the Gun Talk team, although you've been part of the Gun Talk team for like 10 years. You've been doing videos with us for first-person offender and everything else. But now you're full-time down here in Louisiana and getting this range set up, man. Well, I just was out there again. I had my neighbor down here. We're getting things ready for the big Ruger, Ruger experience next week, and it is awesome. The classroom is set up. Set it up last week. All the goodie bags are put together. Uh, the guns, the red dots are mounted. I'm going to get those all zeroed on Monday so you know, so we can go out there and just get right at it. And this- People are going to come in. They're going to get two days of training with you using a Ruger firearm. And at the end of the whole deal, they end up walking away with the Ruger gun, right? Yeah, they get the gun. They get a couple of holsters, several mag pouches. Ammo's provided. Ammo's provided. We got cleaning kits. We got eyes and ears. We've got uh, a variety of swag. I mean, there's a beautiful range bag. It is going to be an event. Ha, this is cool. And this is the very first one. This is the you, you, first one. You've been sweating this one out. I know. You've been make, getting it ready. I, I, the, the training part is the only part I haven't sweated on. Well, that, you do that in your sleep, man. Yeah. You know. I, I'll tell you what, though. It's been a long time since I've run a class, Tom. I yeah. have not run a class since, you know, well, you know, Co- I mean. A couple did. of years now. Or so. Well, it's been over a year. I got divorced, you know. and uh, everything, That does interfere with life. Everything <laughs> was upside down. But, you know, I've been doing training. I'm always training individuals. Right. So uh, entertaining a class is going to be uh, something new for me for the first time again. Well, you, you got that, and you've got this brand new state of the art range we have here, which is pretty phenomenal. Looks gorgeous, by the way. You just done a, a great job. I mean, you, you've been out there the last two hours working out there. You're coming in here. It's hot, it's steamy, it's Louisiana. And you're cutting down poles, and you're in that oxygen with your cutter, and it's like, oh, cow, that's a lot of work. That's right. We got uh, porta potty coming in on uh, Monday, so everything's ready for that. That's, I that's got the a, important thing. I got a great spot for it too. It's covered. It's going to be clean, and uh, we're not going to let anybody mess it up. So it's not a regular porta potty. That is terrific. All right. So one of the things I wanted to ask you is, like, if you're walking, I'm going, well, that's weird. You always carry appendix, and now you're not carrying appendix right now. And you said because it's you're out there working. Talk to me about, because, I mean, that's the, the hottest, greatest, super-duper thing. Everybody's carried appendix. It's fast. It's you know, accessible. It's concealable. Why do you carry appendix? Well, I've been carrying appendix ever since I was an air marshal. And uh, really, the whole idea when you're an air marshal is to keep your cover. I mean, being being not identified as the, the cop in the plane or right. the cop in the airport is really important because you're going to be target number one. And anybody that is carrying, you know, in a situation where something bad does happen, if you are identifiable as a threat, you will be target number one. So mm-hmm. for me, sitting in an airplane, I used to carry on my hip when I first started, and right. I had people would rest their arm on my gun because they thought they were on the armrest. Oh, geez. Yeah, I mean, you're on an airplane. <laughs> <clears throat> I've had them sleep on my mag pouches because I had them on my side, <laughs> had had my gun on my side. 
And then I had to figure out how to have a cover garment. Now, the other day sure. we were out to lunch, and your gun is usually really, really concealed. But sitting in that table, I could see you could you're see printing. It. Yeah, because I'm wearing three, <clears throat> three o'clock position. It's what I, right. I generally do, yeah. Right. And, and uh, for me, as a trained observer, I, I could see it. And and it doesn't <clears> – <throat> it's not necessarily a problem. But you do have to make movements to get to that gun that are very telltale. Your shoulder's going to come up. Your elbow's going to come back. Right. And, uh, and now for me, I could still, if this was concealed, I could still reach around, and I would pull this out of my holster, and I'd get it into my lap, and I could have it. Now, I could do that because I've trained that, and I've done that before. Of course, you've got to watch where your fingers are going. I mean, you could yeah. get a finger and a trigger easy. Yep. So for me, appendix is just, it's, it's, very, it's very concealed. It's very comfortable because I've gotten used to it. And it's not so much appendix. Uh, everybody always says, how do you do that all day long? Because you see me working around here. Right. You've been right. here all week. Right. And I carry it. But I carry it straight up front. Okay. Okay. I mean, it is. It right is in the middle. Right over the family jewels. Um, and, that, and that's the one. I know you hear it all the time. People say, I just don't want that thing <clears> pointing <throat> at my junk. Yeah, I know. And uh, But, you know, I have a. I have a good holster, and I've been using a, a new Safari pro, Safari Land product that's been, you know, that's coming out here this week. Okay. I'm pretty excited about it. It worked really good. It's very minimalist, and I was super impressed with it. So I've been wearing that all week. And you can conceal carry. We had a guy call the show last week. He says, you know, I'm just having trouble uh, with printing because I'm wearing a T-shirt. I said, you know, if you're doing 3 o'clock position like I tend to do, T-shirt will really print. It's one of the reasons I kind of wear the outside, you know, shirt. It's button a button-up button up type of shirt, but it's outside Hawaiian shirt, if you will, that kind of a deal. That that helps. But you can uh, carry T-shirt appendix and be pretty concealed. Yeah, actually, you couldn't see it unless I no. lifted up my shirt to wipe the sweat off my face, could you? No, not at all. Yeah, and I, and KJ carries the same way, you right. know, and, and I always have to ask KJ if he's got his heels on, you know I mean, because... Uh, he hides it really, really well also, but he's been learning from me and watching. And, and honestly, a lot of people say, well, it's so uncomfortable because it jabs into my, you know, my, my uh, femoral nerve. Right. Well, that's why I carry straight up front. Because no. that's what happened to me. I tried it, and it was like poking into my, my thigh <laughs> up here. And it's like, nah, I don't and know I, I like to, do that. I wear my gun very low. I wear it very low it's like behind it's really my belt. In, it's really inside the pants. So. Yeah, it's really down there. I like to get the where the trigger guard and part of the grip is just pulled into my stomach by the belt. Okay. So I can tell you this. Now, for when I first started doing that, and with almost any holster, I mean, heck, I shoot three gun, and I wear my rig. And yep. if I shoot a match, I still come home with bruises around my waist. Ah, Okay, I sure. mean, there's... But yeah, that's you got, something you just learn to deal yeah, you with. You got mag pouches, you got your pistol on your side. Yeah, and I, same deal. I get to wear, there are times when I'm carrying at that three and a, 330 position, and I'm leaning back in a chair, and after a while, it's like it's bruising my kidney back mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and, and it's just stuff that you get used to. Uh, and I think it was Clint Smith that said a gun is not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be comforting. Right. Which is a really great statement. And uh, <clears throat> I've, I've felt that. The, the thing is, most people don't give a new holster time. Ah, uh, they just go, oh, that, that's not comfortable. Well, you got to break it in. You got to get used to it. Yeah. And, and you got to like wiggle it around and find the right position. You got to find, and, and you'll see me every once in a while, I'll be shifting mine around. And, and, you know, I try not to make it a habit, but I'll shift it to where um, the, the belt buckle is actually on the body of the gun. So then the clip's got to be in just the right spot because the belt buckle interferes with the clip on the holster. And it's got to be just right. And I have a couple of go-to holsters that I use. I've been using those uh, Ulti clips, mm -hmm. and uh, they work great because that Ulti clip clips to my pants and not to my belt. Oh. And, and then I run, when I clip the Ulti clip down, I fashion that clip over my belt. Now, I usually wear a nylon belt, so it's a little thinner. Can't right. do it with a leather belt. And the whole thing's a system. <clears throat> it is. It absolutely is. Like today, I'm wearing uh, on my strong side because I'm working in the yard. I'm working out on the range. And the reason it's exposed right now is because I'm sweaty and I'm hot and I tuck my T-shirt behind it because I don't like it rubbing on my fat. <laughs> but I have to have a gun. Well, I have to have a gun while I'm out there, Tom, because there's rattlesnakes down here and copperheads and everything else. And you're not really fond of snakes. I'm I know that. Absolutely not. <laughs> and I'm not fond of intruders. And yeah. in my own personal yard, and I consider this range my personal yard as right. well, I don't mind having a gun exposed. If somebody knows I carry a gun all the time, mm -hmm. well, so be it. 
Right. The thing is, they know that, so they're probably going to try to take me out super secret, which is fine. I mean, and you can't well, there's guard. No, there's no guarantees. You can't guard against everything. Tom, you could come to my house at night if they wanted to rob me. They shoot me through the window, yeah. and then they could come in. Stuff because, can happen. You can't, you can't guarantee against everything. If you come in my house, there's going to be a problem. Well, you got two attack cats now, too. Yeah. Geez. You got two little kittens don't tell yesterday. people that. Man, you got these massive attack cats now. It's the, it's the most love I've had in many <laughs> months now. I, I'm, I'm finally, I finally have something at home that loves me. There you go. Hold on to that thought here. Take a quick break here. We'll come back. I want to talk to Chris Serino about do you need to draw fast or do you need to draw stealthy? We'll talk about that. If you want to join us, if you've got a question for him, 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. I'm Tom Gresham. We'll be right back with more gun talk. All right, back with you. If you don't want to join us, it's very easy. 866-TALK-GUN or call me at Tom Talk Gun. We are visiting with Chris Serino from the Gun Talk team now. Chris, we're in the, the fabulous Gun Talk studios where you shoot all everything, all, all your videos, all your podcasts, and just convicted, uh, or rather just finished the Bill Box show. That's right. And you guys got to quit saying shoot, because every time somebody says uh, somebody's going to be shoot or I got another shooter, I don't know what the heck you guys We're are saying. We're talking about camera but, guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I, uh, you guys say shoot all the time. We don't shoot anything in here, but we do film a lot of stuff. And I know you can't say film anymore because we don't use film. Record. How's that? Yes. We, re we record the show, which will start airing in about ooh, two weeks, really, uh, on Outdoor Channel, the first episode. And it was interesting because you told me that you had all this thing figured out. You got it all uh, shot and completed. And the idea was to have six shows and then rerun them. And then you figured out you had way too much material. So each episode now becomes a two-parter, which is really great because I got to see the first one. It's awesome, man. Well, it was really a treat to get to sit down with all you. Uh, everybody was in in the in the in the office this week, so we got to all sit down and watch the first part of episode one, the second part of episode one. And although I'm not impressed with it, because I'm never impressed with anything I do, uh, everybody really liked it, and to see everybody's reactions is really cool because it's a lot of fun. And and honestly, after you know you watch that first part of episode one. You kind of sit there and think, man, I want to watch the second half. Let's get it on. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's, I mean, it's, uh, and we brought, from, we brought the entire Gun Talk team in here from all over the country this week. We had uh, the all hands meeting. We're doing all of that stuff. Uh, I, I got a call. Let me, let me grab this call and, and maybe we can uh, help out here. Line one, James is with us out of uh, Michigan. Hey, James, you're on Gun Talk. What's going on, man? Hey, Tom. Um, recently, a retail store in my area um, banned guns. And, of course, they no longer shop there. But I think in the, um, the store owner could be persuaded uh, that he's made a wrong move. Mm -hmm. Well, and, here's, uh, what I, here's what I've done in the past. Let me just tell you. Um, forget l writing letters. Actually go stand and talk with the manager or call him on the phone and say, hey, just want to find out what's going on there. Because, I mean, and, and say, look, I mean, I like your store, and, I, and I've always you know, been able to come there, but I can't come there anymore because it's not safe for me anymore because I, I can't protect my family when I'm there. I have found several times that they said, oh, okay, and they'll either tell you, well, that's a corporate rule. It's not us. Or sometimes they just listen to you and go, you know, I never thought of it that way. And I've had them take the, sh the signs down before, the no gun signs. Yeah. I was wondering if there's a, a site where I could... Um like, I know that uh, uh, permit holders are more law-abiding than, than police officers. Ah, yes. You know, uh, yes, there, there's a good website I can send you to. It's uh, gunfacts.info, gunfacts.info. Lots of good material there. that work for you? Gunfacts. Gunfacts.info. Gun that's, that's exactly what I was looking for. Thank okay. you very much. Good deal. Well, good luck. Let us know how it works out, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, Chris, one of the things we were talking about is the speed of draw. We always work on fast draw, fast draw, fast draw. And then I've seen you teach people how to draw slowly and kind of use a stealth method and using that radar of being aware of what's going on. What's yeah. that about? Well, time is of the essence. When you need a gun, you have to use your time wisely. So if you have uh, uh, no time at all, sometimes you just got to go for it and you got to grab for it and go. 
But uh, anytime you can do stuff stealthily uh, and move uh, slowly, move towards cover, create distance, those kind of things. I mean, I've been watching all these videos. I mean, we've had an amazing amount of carjackings across the nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a with, lot of stuff with videos happens. of them. <clears throat> a lot of stuff happens really fast. And one of the things that I'm I'm uh, I'm sad about. I guess I'm. I'm. Uh, it, it disturbs me is that on first person defender we can't do a lot of hand to hand stuff because people get fingers broken yep. and black eyes and forehead split open. Um, a lot of times it comes to following the other person's gun while you draw, and we have a hard time covering that. I'm going to try to do some of that this season on so first person defender. So basically, blocking it, fouling it, getting it off the line so it's not pointing at you yep. while you're fighting. Yeah, and if you get shot, I mean, if you get shot, at least it's not going to be center mass or in the face. I mean, you might get hurt in the hand or something, but uh, I've been hurt a lot, Tom, and I can tell you that uh, when you're in the heat of the moment, you're not going to feel anything. A lot of people worry about getting cut or getting shot and things like that, and, and you are going to get cut with a knife, and you may get shot with a gun. You may get injured just from the muzzle blast, but you're probably not going to feel it. And honestly, um, these are all things you need to play out in your mind. You need to watch these videos that are online. You need to be, be abreast of what's going on. You know, Google Alerts is great because right. I've got self-defense set up as one of those alerts, so when I get self-defense stuff... You know, you could put in anything. You could put carjacking in, and you're going to get to see some I've got of carjacking. Videos. I've got self-defense. I've got gun bans. I've got several of those, so I get these news hits. And, it, and like I said, you can go and watch the videos of these carjackings. You go, one of the things that really bothers me is that it, so often now it's not a guy. It's four or five or six guys doing a carjacking at once. Yeah, and you really need to look at what the biggest threat is. I mean, what's the biggest threat in front of you? Is, it, is Does one of them have a gun? Is it pointed at you? Do both of them have guns? And does one not have it pointed at you? Is one just flashing a gun and one pointing a gun at you? Because, you know, the guy that's not pointing the gun at you, he's probably the less threat. Right. So, you know, you have to make these decisions, and you have to do them in your mind before this incident happens. That's so important. You have to play it out in your mind. If this happens, I'll do that. And if that doesn't work, then I'll do this. It's just like over and over. So that you're, you're really just putting it into action. You're not trying to come up with a plan. There are even times, Tom, when I, you know, because I carry appendix, so therefore it's under my seatbelt. It's behind my shirt now. My shirt's pinned down by the seatbelt. I've got all this stuff going on. There are times, like, I'll go pick somebody up at the airport. I have to go down into New Orleans, uh, and I... We'll uncover my gun, Tom. Yeah, I'll expose. I, I yeah. will tuck. I'll tuck my shirt out. I keep it in the holster because right. you know if if you have That's to bail out of the car, you don't want it not in the holster. You want it with you. You want it on you. Right. You get in a crash. You don't want it falling on the floor. Right. While and then having to reach for it, somebody rams you or does something stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, and now your gun's on the floor and you're trying to find it. So, I, but I will expose it. So, you know, I'm always thinking that way, and and I know that it probably sounds a little bit paranoid, but. I mean, you have to be ready. You have to be ready for the unthinkable to happen. You have to be prepared. Well, exactly. So you go through all of that. And the other part of it is ramping up your awareness so you see what's going on further out, and maybe that gives you a chance. And go. And you need to practice that stealth draw that doesn't call attention to what you're doing to be able to get the gun out of your holster and in your turn in your turn in your turn in so that you're just sitting there sitting there sitting there sitting someplace where you actually have the gun have the gun have the gun have the gun. I mean even if that means reaching around to that three o'clock position and just with, popping that gun your, out of the with holster. Your left hand. Yep. Oh, okay. So that you can pop that gun out and get it down into your hands, into your lap. You've got a good grip on it. And you're ready to take action. The reason you, you would to. do that is because if you're right-handed, you can do the right-hand draw. Then your shoulder comes up and draws attention to you, your elbow goes back. If I see that, if I if I see somebody reaching for a gun, and that's a reaching for a gun thing. Right. I mean, they may be reaching for their wallet, but yeah. I'm pretty sure but it that, looks like uh, a move for a gun. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to prepare myself for a gun. It may be a wallet. Yep. So if it's a wallet and it comes out, uh, you know, those are split time, split second decisions. Sure. If it's a gun, I have to be ready for that, too. But you've got to expect the worst and hope for the best. And you have to train your brain. There you go. If you want to know more about what Chris is teaching here, a lot of other things we're going, check us out. We've got uh, the videos on Facebook. They're on uh, GunTalkTV.com and all the other places that Gun Talk puts its videos out. And you guys are doing several videos a, a week now. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. All right, so we're down here in Louisiana. You're going to have your first class this week, and then you're going to have a string of classes coming. So people need to get 
on our newsletter so they can find out about it because they're going to sell out fast. Yeah, I'm hoping to have up two pistols, two carbines, a concealed carry tactics class. Not a concealed carry class, but a concealed carry tactics. All the stuff we cover. All that stuff that we've covered in FPD. Outstanding. Go to guntalk.com and sign up for the newsletter and you will be informed of what's coming next. <laughs> 